Okay, now we have a hyperboloid. Hyperboloid of one sheet, it turns out. I know it's a hyperboloid because if I, if I freeze x as some constant, I have y squared minus z squared equals a constant. That's going to be a hyperbola. If I freeze y at some constant, I have x squared minus z squared equals some constant. That's going to be a hyperbola. And um, if I get the two squares that have the same sign together on one side and the other part over here, I can see that this is a hyperboloid of one sheet because no matter what value of z, I always have some circle. So remember, hyperboloids come in the two flavors, the two sheets. Right? The two sheet ones, there'll be some value where you don't intersect the curve at all. But I can see no matter what value of z I have, this must be a one sheet because no matter what value of z I have, there's always um, a circle or elliptical cross section there. So this is a hyperboloid of two sheets. Now we can parameterize this a lot like we did the cone using cylindrical. That's probably the most natural way to do this parameterization. As we look at this parameterization, the reason I chose cylindrical is because it has symmetry around an axis, in particular around the z-axis. Although it doesn't really matter what axis the symmetry is about, you could always just set up your, um, just just rotate or change the names on the variables so that um, so that the axis of symmetry was the z-axis. So doesn't particularly matter, just the fact that there is a symmetry about a particular axis. So um, and we want the portion outside the cylinder um, x squared plus y squared equals 1. Oh, that's kind of interesting. So let's see. Well, we, we see that our minimum radius here is, is 1, so that's going to be actually the entire um, hyperboloid of one sheet, right? Here's this cylinder and all of it, except for maybe this little waistband here, right, which lies right on the cylinder, the rest of the surface is outside. So, um, <clears throat> so that's really not much of a restriction. We want the whole thing then. Okay, well, let's see. What we can do, what we notice is that for any value of z, you can determine the r value, right? Looking at this equation, x squared plus y squared in cylindrical is r squared. So r squared equals z squared over 9 plus 1. So r is equal to the square root of z squared over 9 plus 1. Um, that means, looking at our cylindrical equations, remember x is r cosine theta, y is r sine theta, and z is z, then we have x equals the square root of z squared over 9 plus 1 times the cosine of theta, and y is equal to r, which is z squared over 9 plus 1 times the sine of theta, and z is z. So we have x, y, and z in terms of just two inputs, theta and z. Of course, you could change the names of the inputs to u, to u and v, or whatever you wanted for those names. It's just a matter of, matter of what you call them. But we need bounds on, on, let's see, on the z and the theta. Well, um, we, we, we really just need, I guess, theta between, theta between 0 and 2 pi. Z is really unbounded, right? Since the whole hyperboloid is outside of the cylinder, there's no requirements on Z. Z just goes from negative infinity to infinity. So we, we were able to come up with, here's our parameterization. Right, complete with bounds on the parameters and equations that allow you to get your location, x, y, and z, from those two parameters. Let's go ahead and plot those in Maple just, just for the fun of looking at our parameterization. We're going to have, um, so plot 3D and give our list of equations. Uh, so the square root of z squared over 9 plus 1 times cosine theta, so the square root of z squared over 9 plus 1 uh, times the cosine of theta and do almost that the same thing for y square root, it's just times the sine of theta and then z, there's my list of list of uh, x, y, and z coordinates that I get for my parameters theta and z we said theta equals 0 to 2 pi. And um, basically, we didn't need any bounds on z. Of course, for maple, though, we'd need some bounds. Let's go maybe negative th z 
equal negative 3 to 3, just so that Maple will have some values to work with. We could always change those to be larger range if we wanted to. Hmm, okay, so we get we get the picture of our um, hyperboloid of one sheet. Let's see. Now again, we can just choose the scaling to be constrained there. That's a more realistic picture of our hyperboloid of one sheet. Here's now another hyperboloid. Again, you know it's hyperboloid. If you freeze x, you have y squared minus z squared, so that's a hyperboloid. If you freeze y, you have x squared minus z squared equals constant, so that's another hyperbola. So you've got hyperbolas in most directions, and therefore it's a hyperboloid. Um, we know that it's a hyperboloid of two sheets, because if we get the x squared plus y squared alone, then you can imagine for constant values of z, we're going to see ellipses, in this case actually circles. So, um, but we won't see any circles if z is too close to 0, because if z is too close to 0, if it's between negative 3 and 3, then the radius of my circle turns out to be 0. So we know it's this case where as you come down, right, you get smaller and smaller circles, and then when the z equals 3, they disappear, and you don't see anything until z gets down to negative 3, in which case you get a point, and then circles opening down like this. So this is going to be your hyperboloid of two sheets then. And this is saying parameterize the portion of that hyperboloid of two sheets uh, below the xy plane. That would be the part down here, right? Um, but we, we need the part where, where x is between negative 1 and 3. So x from negative 1 to 3 and y from negative 2 to 2. So we're just talking about sort of if you took a, a rectangular cookie cutter and cut out a piece of this hyperboloid. So let's set it up. Because the bounds are nice in terms of x and y, it's probably best just to solve for z. So we have, if we solve for z, x squared plus y squared plus 1 equals z squared over 9. So z squared equals 9x squared plus 9y squared plus 9. So z would be either plus or minus the square root of 9x squared plus 9y squared plus 9. Um, we know to choose the plus, the minus, because we know we're below the xy plane, so we choose the minus sign. Once you have one variable as a function of the others, then you, you get an easy parameterization then. Your function with two inputs and three outputs. Let's see, the three outputs would be x and y, and then that third variable would be um, 9x squared plus 9y squared um, plus 9. Okay, and then we can just use the bounds on x and y that we were given. We were told that x had to be between negative 1 and 3, and y had to be between negative 2 and 2, so there's our parameterization of a function with two inputs, x and y, and three outputs, x, y, and z. And we can graph that. So in Maple again, remember the command that we want to use is plot3d. And our equations were x, y, and this, I'm just writing it as 3 times, factor out the 9 and take the square root, 3 times the square root of x squared plus y squared plus 1. Plus one. Okay, that's my equations. X goes from negative one to three, and Y goes from negative two to two, and that should do it. Okay. Let me put some axes on this so you can see axes equal boxed. All right. So we have a portion of um, hyperboloid here. Oh, do you know what? I put the wrong, s I forgot to copy the sign. The z was negative, right? Did I write it down here? Yeah, there's a negative sign. I forgot to put that in. So now my hyperboloid is now flipped. We're getting the lower part now if we choose the negative sign. You see how it's the part that's below the xy plane where x and y are in this rectang rectangle here um, between negative 1 and 3 and negative 2 and 2.